All right, guys, we are going to just read the first part of this lesson two on wave properties. So we're going to look at just amplitude and energy today. Amplitude and energy. Any energy that moves through a medium moves the particles of the medium. So we're going to go ahead and highlight that. The particles of the medium bump into each other. When they do, they might move a little or they might move a lot. Imagine you are floating on a raft in a pool. The water is in the rest position. Someone splashes the water and creates wave. You barely feel them as they pass. These waves have a small amplitude. The water moves back and forth a small distance from its rest position. Now imagine that somebody dives into the pool. This makes waves that bounce your raft up and down. The waves have higher crests and deeper troughs. The water moves a greater distance from its rest position to make waves with a greater amplitude. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight this word. Amplitude is the maximum distance that the particles in a medium move from their rest position as the wave passes through the medium. For any wave, the larger the amplitude, the more energy the wave carries. We're gonna highlight that, that is super important. The wave produced by the diver hitting the water caused a greater change than the wave produced by gentle splashing. The waves produced by the diver had more energy. So right now I want you guys to do this. I want you to write that energy and amplitude go together, okay? So if we have increased amplitude, that means our wave has increased energy. Okay, so these are directly proportionate. When the energy is high, the amplitude is high. So what does that look like? So we're gonna look at it first with a transverse wave. Remember, this is the shape of our transverse wave that moves perpendicular to the disturbance and that has crests and troughs. Okay, amplitude and energy of transverse waves. Let's go ahead and look at this one. When you move a rope up and down, you produce a transverse wave with specific amplitude. For a transverse wave, the greater distance a particle moves from the rest position to the top of the crest or the bottom of a trough. That distance is the amplitude of a transverse wave. Okay, so remember our rest is right here. Okay, our rest is right here. So it's going to be the distance here from rest to crest or from rest to trough. Rest to crest or rest to trough. So when we're comparing these two waves, I see that this one over here has a higher crest and a lower trough. So this one has more energy because the amplitude is higher, okay? In the figure above, you see the difference between a wave with a small amplitude, the one on the left, and one with the large amplitude, the one on the right. Amplitude in a transverse wave is measured by the distance from the rest position of the medium to one of the crests or one of the troughs. So let's go ahead and highlight that just so we remember it. Amplitude in a transverse wave is measured by the distance from the rest to the crest or rest to the trough, okay? The energy carried by a transfer, transverse wave increases as the amplitude of the wave increases. Waves that have larger amplitude have more energy. I need you to be remembering that energy and amplitude go together. Waves that have smaller amplitude have less energy. So one thing I wanna to talk to you guys about here, it's that sometimes, yeah, let's change this color, something that definitely is different. Sometimes you are given the distance between the crest and the trough, and you have to figure out what the amplitude is. 
So if I know this distance right here from this crest to this trough, if I know that, I'm able to calculate the amplitude because I'm just gonna take half of that. If the, because the distance from the rest to the crest is going to be the same as the distance from the rest to the trough. So if I know the whole measurement from crest to trough, but I'm being asked what is the amplitude, then I'm just gonna take that in half. So if I know that the distance between the crest and trough equals oh, five meters, for example. Yeah, it's a pretty big wave. What is, what is the amplitude? I know the amplitude then would be half of this 2.5 meters. So if I know the total from the top to the bottom, knowing that the amplitude is really just from the rest to the crest, if I know the whole distance, then I divide by two. So I'm gonna divide by two. If I'm given the total distance from crest to trough, I am able to calculate the amplitude, okay? Because I'm just simply gonna divide that by two. All right, so that's what it looks like on a transverse wave. A little bit more difficult to look at it with a longitudinal wave, all right? So nothing to highlight there. So let's change our highlighter to blue. So amplitude and energy in a longitudinal wave, all right? So these are what our slinky waves look like, right? So the amplitude of a longitudinal wave depends on the distance between the particles of the medium. The figure on the right shows large and small amplitudes in longitudinal waves. In longitudinal waves that have large amplitude, the particles in the compressions are closer together and the particles in the refractions are farther apart. All right, we're gonna highlight that entire thing. In a longitudinal wave that has a large amplitude, and you know that's gonna be a lot of energy, the particles in the compressions are close together and the particles in the rarefactions are farther apart. The larger the amplitude of the wave, the more energy the wave carries. So we are going to highlight that. I'm gonna change that to a different color because we have got to remember that energy and amplitude go together. So questions involving um, energy, it's going to tr translate into um, a higher amplitude or a lower amplitude, okay? So, um, so a low amplitude wave here, okay, the here coils, they're farther apart and higher than in high amplitude waves. So this, the when we look at the compression here, in a high amplitude waves, the compressions are going to be tighter together. Okay, so here the coils are closer together than that of a low amplitude wave. It is more difficult to look at um, amplitude of waves when we're looking at longitudinal waves. Because when we're looking at these transverse waves, boy, we can see that the crust is higher. All right, that's easy to see. So, but when we're looking at longitudinal waves, wow, you know, is it really it's hard to see, you know, that these compressions are, are tighter, okay, that they're closer together, and that their rare factions are farther apart, okay? So that is the scoop on amplitude and um, energy in a longitudinal wave and in a transverse wave, okay? So make sure that you have everything marked that I have, and when we come back together in person next, we will talk about another property of waves called wavelength. This was the first property of waves amplitude. All right. Okay, guys, I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye.